Let's look at the third area. Divorced by the cultural conservatives. This third group of Bush critics are the cultural conservatives, among whom are Christopher Buckley, P.J. O'Rourke, Pat Buchanan, Jeffrey Hart. Hart is particularly interesting. He taught English at Dartmouth for four decades, and during that same period, he was a regular contributor to National Review. He wrote speeches for Ronald Reagan as, a, even as he was a prof. He characterizes himself as a, an updated Burkean. He recently quipped, many Republicans must feel like that legendary man at the bar on the Titanic, watching the iceberg slide, outside, slide by outside a porthole. He remarked, I asked for ice, but this is too much. Republicans voted for a Republican and got George W. Bush, but his Republican Party is unrecognizable as the party we have known." Close quote. At the core of Hart's criticism is Bush's use of evangelical piety to disguise a radical agenda. Hart wrote, quote, the Bush presidency often is called conservative, but this is a mistake. It is populist. It is radical and its principal energies have roots in American history, and those roots are not conservative. He elaborated, like the founders who were part of the Whig gentry, I loathe populism. This guy really does sound like a conservative, doesn't he? Most especially in the form of populist religion, that is the current pestiferous Bible-banging evangelicals, whom I regard as organized ignorance, a menace to public health, to science, to medicine, to serious Western religion, to intellect, and indeed to sanity. Evangelicalism driven by emotion is not creedal, is thoroughly erratic, and by its very nature cannot be conservative. In fact, cultural conservatives mockingly prayed that George W. Bush would be born again, this time as a true conservative. Okay, in conclusion, let's look at either what time will show to be an affair to remember or a remarriage. It's one thing to divorce. It's another to drive someone to marry the opposition. In our Republican form of government, one principal way we ratify a president's leadership is to elect his successor. So Truman ratified FDR, Johnson ratified Kennedy, George H.W. Bush ratified Reagan. In 2008, not only did John McCain not ratify George W. Bush, he did not even want to be considered Bush's successor, preferring instead to link himself to Ronald Reagan. The prominent conservatives who threw their support to Barack Obama include some of the names we've already looked at, Bruce Bartlett, Andrew Bacevich, Jeffrey Hart, and add to these, Doug Kamick, Andrew Sullivan, Ken Duberstein, Kathleen Parker, Anthony Sullivan, Christopher Buckley. With justification, some add to this list, Bush's former Secretary of State, Colin Powell, and the reformed neocon, Francis Fukuyama. The pedigree, influence, and intellectual firepower of the Obamacons suggest that Bush contributed mightily to deconstructing, de deconstructing an edgy coalition that Buckley and Reagan built up. Certainly from these conservatives' perspective, he did. Of course, it's a much more complex time had moved on from when that coalition had been formed. But here's what I want to leave you with. There's nothing new or shocking in this turn of events. The conservatives who repudiated Bush and voted for Obama in 2008 were actually doing a very American thing, even a very conservative thing. We forget that Russell Kirk backed Eugene McCarthy back in 1968, and that National Review did not want to support Richard Dixon in 1960 or 1972. Then, as now, prominent conservatives were following a hallowed tradition, going all the way back to the American Revolution and before, to divorce for the sake of principle, rather than to suffer for the sake of politics. Thank you, gentlemen, for those great uh, three concluding presentations. Uh, we're running against the, the, the time limit here, but if there's a few questions, I'm sure we can entertain those.
You know, we, I think, I didn't realize, we have run over. Uh, if there's one burning question, if you take a, does anybody have a burning question to ask? Otherwise, I want to respect the time of people who came here. No questions? One. Okay, one question. Mr. Mayor. Dr. Nelson, I was a little surprised in your wonderful remarks not to see any connection made between Carl Rove and Cain. And yet I recall that in the Valerie Plain affair, Rove avoided the same trouble. But from your research, it seems likely to me, without having that research, these two people had an alignment of cause there that would have had them working together. Have you got anything to support that? Or I don't. Um, as far as the specific question, in general, uh, Cheney's w w was generally indifferent to the work that Rove was doing. Um, Rove was, was, was trying to advance and safeguard President Bush's political interests. Cheney was, was, wanted to be helpful in certainly in, in, uh, in, in helping uh, the Republican Party regain control of Congress in the 2002 midterm and then, of course, help President Bush get reelected in 2004. But Cheney was somebody, again, I think, because, uh, because of his lack of personal political ambition for, for subsequent office and because of his, his deep concern about public policy and about restoring what he saw as, as the rightful authority of the presidency. I don't think Cheney and, 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 and Rove um, worked as closely together as Cheney did with others in the administration who, were, who, who shared his, his, his primary interests? It's a very good question. Um, but even, even if the answer was yes to, the, to your specific question, I don't think it would signify much beyond that about the Cheney vice presidency. Thank you very much. Well, we're going to conclude now. I want to thank my two distinguished colleagues for uh, being with me on this panel. Uh, thank you both, gentlemen. I want to thank all of the participants, uh, starting from last night when uh, Rufus Fears addressed us, all the way uh, through today. I wish Casey Pipes were still here. Thank you all. It, uh, I think it was a tremendously successful conference. And one of the reasons it was successful also is because of you, the audience who came. You came prepared and asked thoughtful questions. I appreciate that very much. Uh, we will reconvene, actually, in Washington, D.C. at the Library of Congress. Uh, on December 11th, so if you want to rerun, come to Washington that week for December 11th and 12th. Thank you very much. We are adjourned.